today we are going to discuss about the anatomy of thyroid gland the most commonly and frequently asked question in the university examinations so the questions usually what we ask nowadays under the cbme curriculum in rs4 we ask like structured questions so the question can be like this and they have asked multiple times okay the discuss thyroid gland under following headings that is location coverings presenting parts and relations blood supply add a note on development with anomalies so nowadays they for cbme curriculum they are clubbing all these uh, clinical anatomy and they are integrating this embryology and histology also so first what we'll do we will understand the anatomy of thyroid gland under the following headings first we will see what is its shape peculiarities location presenting parts capsule that is covering relations blood supply nerve supply histology embryology that is development and lastly upward aspects that we'll discuss while discussing all these headings so first when you see what is thyroid here thyroid means shield thyroid means shield it is a butterfly shaped or h shaped endocrine gland okay where it is present it is present in the neck but it has some peculiarities here it is the most superficial endocrine gland and it is the largest endocrine gland it is highly vascular and it depends on the external source for the hormone synthesis and it stores its secretions so what you what you learn by this it is the most superficial endocrine gland and it, by this you can understand it is the only endocrine gland which is accessible for physical examination okay and it is the largest endocrine gland it is highly vascular so the why what is the meaning of this highly vascular because whenever we are, we are doing thyroidectomy we will come across a lot of bleeding bleeding so blood supply of thyroid gland and the relations of these blood vessels become very important for the surgeons to create a bloodless field or surgery with a minimum bleeding it depends on the external source for the hormone synthesis like we say it depends on the iodide you, uh, you would have seen in the many ads tata salt deshka salt this that even now nowadays colgate toothpaste also has salt so there is no problem with this this external source but it depends on the external source it's the only gland which depends on the external source for the hormone synthesis and one more peculiarity is it is the only endocrine gland which stores its secretions in the form of colloid okay if you see the histology of the thyroid gland where you can see the colloid this thyroid follicles have colloid and lined by this epithelium that we will discuss in the further slides coming to the location location so location it is a median structure in the neck and it is a deep, deep structure represent the anterior triangle of the neck it is a median structure it is present anteriorly and it lies beneath the muscular triangle which is one of the subdivisions of the anterior triangle as you already know the anterior triangle has as a whole it has seven triangles okay three pairs of triangle and a median submental triangle there are three pairs of triangles are digastric carotid and muscular so this thyroid gland is lying beneath the floor of the muscular triangle and it flanks the anterolateral part of thyroid and cricoid cartilage so it is related to these cartilage and it extends from c5 to t1 vertebra so this is about the location it is present in the median part of the neck present in the deep part of the neck beneath the anterior triangle and which part of the anterior triangle muscular triangle and it is closely related to thyroid and cricoid cartilages so you can see here in this animation you can see so this is the thyroid gland you can see these are the structures it is a h shaped or butterfly shaped endocrine gland thyroid means shield you can see how it is flanking the the thyroid and the cricoid cartilage and is extending from c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 vertebra it extends from c8 to t1 you can notice there that is the location of the thyroid gland and again you can see here in this one you can see if you just visualize in the anterior median portion of the neck what you see when you reflect the skin you will see pleurisma that is one of the facial muscle migrated to neck for functional reasons and then you will see the deep fascia of the neck deep fascia of neck is organized into three layers that is 
outside investing layer then pre tracheal layer and pre vertebral layer and not only these layers also you have many muscular fascias like infrahyoid fascia and all and once you take out the deep fascia of the neck it is organized like this outside you can see that is investing layer pre tracheal layer and pre vertebral layer you can notice how this deep fascia of neck is organized into three layers so outside sleeve like that is investing layer then you have pre tracheal and pre what if this is the investing layer you can see there this is the investing layer which is surrounding the entire neck it is higher posteriorly than anterior aspect and what else you see here so i told you the thyroid gland is present in the deep part of the neck in the median line so when you open the skin and superficial fascia you see these anterior jugular veins which are the bleeders during the incision for thyroidectomy and uh, then you can see the muscles there infrahyoid muscles the superficial muscle that is sternohyoid superficial and converging these uh, sternohyoid and sternothyroid they form the floor of the muscular triangle so to access the thyroid gland you have to go through these muscles that is sternohyoid right sternohyoid and left sternohyoid you can see then you will see beneath them you can see sternothyroid muscle this is sternothyroid extending from the sternum to thyroid cartilage deep and diverging sternohyoid is superficial and converging so you can see just beneath these you will see this pretracheal fascia that is covering the thyroid gland extending up to the hyoid bone above and it is lost into the mediastinum below as you can notice so this is about the location of the gland so it is present in the deepest part of the neck anterior part media median region in the anterior triangle and in the which subdivision of the anterior triangle beneath the floor of muscular triangle so what are the presenting parts here presenting parts so when you see the thyroid gland is having lobe is three sided pyramid and isthmus is a, a narrow part of tissue connecting these that's what is called as isthmus isthmus means a connecting link and isthmus is over the tracheal rings because it is flanking the cricoid cartilage there so if you see here in this video the thyroid gland is like this you can see the two lobes that is isthmus what you are noticing and this is the right and left lobe that is that part is isthmus roughly quadrilateral whereas each lobe is roughly pyramidal it is a three sided pyramid having a apex there this is the that is apex and this is one lobe you can see that is apex base that is the anterior border you can notice there so anterior border is contains with the anterior border of the opposite lobe and here you can see there is the posterior border and this is the two borders are there and this is the anterolateral surface or lateral surface of a lobe of the thyroid gland you can see this is posterior surface you can notice pair of parathyroid glands there and this is the medial surface of the lateral lobe or one lobe of the thyroid gland that is medial surface you can notice there posterior border is separating the medial surface from the posterior surface anterior border separates it from the lateral surface or anterolateral surface and when you come to isthmus you can see isthmus this isthmus has a superior border and inferior border it has a an anterior surface and posterior surface this is the posterior surface so these are the presenting parts it has two lobes and uh, uh, isthmus okay so you can see sometimes what happens a pyramidal tissue lobe of or a pyramidal tissue will extend from the thyroid gland we call it as pyramidal lobe usually it is limited to left of the midline and sometimes a fibromuscular band connects this to the hyoid bone we call it as a levator glandule thyroidic like this you can see axillary thyroid tissue will be there so usually there will be remnant of thyroid duct that will discuss during development coming to the dimensions here so it roughly measures around 20 to 25 grams in weight and each lateral lobe measures around 5 cm long 3 cm in width and 2 cm in thickness isthmus is about half an inch in both vertical and transverse diameters these are the dimensions of the 
thyroid gland there come into the covering sphere we had asked we have seen in the question coverings what are the covering sphere and we have seen while seeing the location it has two coverings here true capsule and false capsule the true capsule is here it is nothing but a condensation of the connective tissue of the gland and false capsule is derived from the pretracheal layer what is pretracheal layer it is one of the layers of deep cervical fascia we have discussed three layers outside investing layer pretracheal layer then the pre vertebral layer and here you can see it has this venous plexus beneath the true capsule the same kind of arrangement or just a similar arrangement you can see in the prostate but in prostate what you see the venous plexus lies between the true capsule and false capsule so during thyroidectomy we remove thyroid gland with the true capsule to prevent bleeding because the venous plexus is beneath the true capsule whereas in prostate we remove the prostate without true capsule because the venous plexus is between true and false capsule so false capsule is is nothing but pretracheal fascia whereas true true capsule is nothing but peripheral condensation of the gland itself so these are the two things that you see and the inner surface of this pretracheal fascia will join the cricoid cartilage to form a thing called as ligament of berry that's why thyroid gland will move with deglutition okay you can differentiate the midline neck swelling from the thyroid gland swellings by just movement during swallowing and the thyroid gland moves during swallowing because it is connected to cricoid cartilage via ligament of berry ligament of berry is nothing but the part of or thickening of the pretracheal fascia on the posterior medial side it is attached to cricoid cartilage and this false capsule is nothing but pretracheal fascia you can see here okay the pre layers which we have already seen the encircling layer like a collar of tissue or sheet this is the investing layer and this is the pre tracheal layer and you have pre vertebral layer and between the pre tracheal and pre vertebral you can see carotid sheath which is also one of the modifications of the deep cervical fascia the carotid sheath anterior wall or anterior layer is formed by the pre vertebral pre tracheal layer whereas posterior wall is formed by the pre vertebral fascia so you can see there so these are the two coverings of the thyroid gland pre tracheal fascia and the true capsule you can see this is a one more anterior view you can see how the pre tracheal fascia is extending about to the hyoid bone and below it is connecting to the mediastinum or it will blend with the pericardium and you can see there will be true capsule and beneath true capsule you will you will notice the venous plexus so let us see that let us see the coverings here you can see you have seen what is the outermost layer of the neck here deep cervical fascia and take out the deep cervical fascia infrahyoid fascia covering the muscles that is infrahyoid fascia you will notice this thyroid it is extending about to the hyoid bone below it will be lost into the middle mediastinum join or it blend with the pericardium and once you take out the pretracheal fascia then we are left with the this true capsule that is true capsule you can notice true capsule the venous plexus lies beneath the true capsule and this is the true capsule of the thyroid gland which is in shape of the gland itself because it is formed by the condensation of the uh, connective tissue of the gland only so coming to the lobes each lobe here each lobe is roughly conical with the apex base and uh, three surfaces that is this is the anterior surface medial surface and a posterior surface two borders anterior and posterior we have already seen that so if you so here the thyroid gland again we will see yes like this it has two lobes called as lateral lobes and a isthmus this is one lobe each lobe is roughly pyramidal three sided pyramid you can notice that that is the that is the apex this is the that is the apex you can see this is the base 
and you can see this is lateral surface and this is the medial surface and this one is posterior surface where you can see two parathyroid glands embedded there this is the anterior border which separates the lateral surface from the medial surface and this is the you can notice that is the posterior border there separating the posterior surface from the medial surface that is what you are noticing you can see each lobe presents apex base and uh, three surfaces that is isthmus having superior and inferior borders anterior and posterior surfaces these are the presenting parts here and coming to the relations the relations here of each lobe so lateral surface i told you the thyroid gland is beneath the muscular triangle so why that that triangle is called as muscular triangle because it has trap muscles infrahyoid muscles which are forming the content and floor of that triangle as such there is no important content in the muscular triangle only thing is the thyroid gland is a important structure lying beneath this muscular triangle so the lateral surface of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland is related to these infrahyoid muscles namely there will be sternocleidomastoid and that sternocleidomastoid is a big muscle it's not an infrahyoid muscle the infrahyoid muscles are superior belly of umohyoid sterno hyoid superficial and converging then there is sterno thyroid deep and diverging this is sterno thyroid okay so this is sterno hyoid superficial and converging sterno thyroid is deep and diverging then superior belly of umo hyoid so these are the four muscles you can remember as four s which are related to the lateral surface of the lateral lobe of thyroid gland you can see in this horizontal section you can see this is a thyroid gland the lateral surface is related to this these four muscles sternocleidomastoid sternohyoid superior belly of umohyoid and this one is sternothyroid so this is a lateral surface what you are noticing that is a lateral surface these are the relations then coming to the the relations of the apex and base apex and base you can have already seen these are the muscles which are related to the laterally superior belly of umohyoid this is sterno thyroid and there will be sterno hyoid and sterno cleidomastoid four s muscles what you see there these all are related to the lateral surface of the thyroid gland and you can see the apex apex is between the the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx inferior constrictor has two parts thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus and this is sterno thyroid the apex is wedged between inferior constrictor medially laterally you have this sterno thyroid muscle and what it tells you any swelling from the apex of the thyroid gland or lateral of thyroid gland will not extend above because it is between these two muscles wedge between two muscles and near the apex you can see the traversment of superior thyroid vessels and also close relation of that with the external laryngeal nerve which is the branch of superior laryngeal nerve which is internal branch of vagus nerve that is the external laryngeal nerve that you can notice so apex is related to that we have seen the lateral surface apex this is the base base is related to namely fourth and fifth tracheal rings you can notice there the base is related so here you can notice again the lateral surface is related to these four muscles if you isolate that so outer most muscle is sternocleidomastoid this is sternohyoid this one is superior belly of umohyoid that is sternohyoid superior belly of umohyoid and deep to sternohyoid you can see sterno thyroid deep and diverging sternohyoid is superficial and converging it is going to hyoid bone sternothyroid will go to thyroid cartilage so remember four muscles sternocleidomastoid sternohyoid superior belly of umohyoid and sternothyroid four s you can also write platysma skin superficial fascia and deep fascia they also form the lateral lobe relation lateral surface relation and coming to the posterior relations posterior relations you can see the lobe here it is related to carotid sheath i told you it is also one of the modifications of the 
dyphasia medially medially it is related to two tubes that is trachea and esophagus that is you can say larynx and pharynx which will continue as the trachea and esophagus it is related to two muscles two cartilage and two nerves so you can remember that rule of 2 for the medial relation of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland so remember rule of 2 let us see the posterior relations here if you see posterior it is related to this carotid sheath containing common carotid artery internal jugular vein and vagus nerve and by piercing carotid sheath you can see superior thyroid artery is coming towards the apex you can see this loop of ansa cervicalis formed by ansa hypoglossae and ansa cervic and the, the descendants cervicalis you can see the posterior surface is related to carotid sheath and contents of the carotid sheath so posterior surface is that coming to the medial surface what did we discuss remember rule of 2 for the medial surface if you isolate here yes it is related to two cartilages two muscles two nerves and two tubes you can see the muscle there inferior constrictor having two parts thyropharyngeal and cricopharyngeal this is cricothyroid muscle straight part and oblique part of the cricothyroid muscle these both are the relations to the medial surface of the lateral lobe and two cartilages this is which cartilage thyroid cartilage below you can see cricoid cartilage two nerves external laryngeal and this one is recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve is present behind the ligament of berry in the tracheoesophageal groove usually during thyroidectomy we avoid injuring recurrent laryngeal nerve otherwise the patient will come with hoarseness of voice as a complication of the surgery so you can see the two tubes two muscles two nerves and two cartilages are related to medial surface of the Lateral lobe of thyroid gland. You can remember as rule of two. Coming to the anterior border. Anterior border we have discussed. It is thin and separates the superficial or lateral surface from the medial surface. It is closely related to the anterior division or anterior branch of the superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery. It is the first branch of external carotid artery in the neck, and it runs along the superior border of isthmus and anastomosis with the same. branch on the opposite side that is the anterior border what you can notice posterior border posterior border is thick and rounded somewhat and it is related to the anastomosis between the posterior division of uh, uh, the superior thyroid artery and uh, inferior thyroid artery and where they meet usually you will see parathyroid glands between the anastomosis of superior and inferior thyroid arteries so you can see the two glands there so it is related to superior and inferior parathyroid glands and anastomosis of superior and inferior parathyroid arteries superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery inferior thyroid artery is a branch of this costo cervical trunk and coming to the isthmus isthmus has two surfaces and two borders you can see isthmus is here so anterior surface is related to the muscles same again sternohyoid and sternothyroid posterior surface is related to the cricoid cartilage and tracheal rings superior border is related to anastomosis between the anterior division of right and left superior thyroid artery whereas inferior border is related to anastomosis between the right and left inferior thyroid arteries and also related to anterior jugular veins which we have seen in superficial fascia coming to the blood supply as we have discussed the superior thyroid artery is a branch coming from the external carotid and it it bifurcates near the apex as anterior and posterior division the anterior division will run along the anterior border and superior border of isthmus to anastomosis with the contemporary of the opposite side and you can sometimes you can see the thyroid ema artery coming from the aortic arch or brachiocephalic trunk the inferior thyroid artery is coming from the thyroid cervical trunk of the first part the other branches of the thyroid cervical trunk are the superior intercostal artery 
in phase three, uh, this uh, thyroid cervical or transverse cervical artery. So the three bands of thyroid cervical trunk are superior intercostal artery, in phase third artery, transverse cervical artery. So come from the first part of clavian artery. You can see here it ascends behind the gland till the level of the cricoid cartilage, and it has somewhat variant course with the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Whereas the superior third artery has close relation with the external laryngeal nerve, whereas the loop of the inferior third artery has variant course with the recurrent laryngeal nerve. What is the clinical importance and application? We will discuss in further slides. Coming to the veins, the thyroid gland is drained by three veins. Superior thyroid, middle thyroid, and inferior thyroid. Superior thyroid, inferior thyroid, in middle, middle thyroid veins go to the respective intranjugular veins. Whereas in both the right and left inferior thyroid veins drain to left brachiocephalic vein. Coming to the lymphatic drainage, they go to the pre and the patriarchal group of lymph nodes. Finally, draining into the this jugular lymph nodes, a chain of lymph nodes in the neck. So you can see there. Superior thyroid vein and middle thyroid vein go to the respective internal jugular veins, whereas inferior thyroid vein drain to left brachiocephalic vein. So if you see here in this animation about the blood supply here, you can notice there is a superior thyroid artery branching into the interdivision and postdivision. It has close relation with this nerve, which nerve is external. Laryngeal. Why it's called as external laryngeal? Because internal laryngeal is there. It is going through this thyroid membrane to supply the larynx. The internal laryngeal nerve supply the larynx as and provide sensory innervation. Whereas external laryngeal nerve, it will descend along with the superior artery and it will supply this cricothyroid muscle. You can notice there. And this is inferior third artery coming from thyroid cervical trunk, branch of the first part of subclavian artery, and it is it has a close relation or variant relation with the recurrent laryngeal nerve in the tracheoesophageal groove. And coming to the venous drainage, you can see superior thyroid vein, middle thyroid vein, and inferior thyroid veins. So superior and middle drain to respective internal jugular vein. Whereas inferior thyroid vein, both of them drain to left brachiocephalic vein. Coming to the development of thyroid gland. See, thyroid gland develops with the development of tongue and other pharyngeal arch or pharyngeal apparatus derivatives. So it develops as a endodontal diverticulum or thickening in the midline in the floor of the primitive pharynx, where there is development of this tongue. As you know, tongue has two parts, anterior two-third and posterior one-third. Anterior two-third is formed by the tubercular and two lingual swellings. Posterior one-third is formed by the couple of his or hypobranchial eminence. So it appears as an outpouching, which will form a duct and descend in the neck. You can see here, it is appearing as an endodermal thickening and forms a depression and forms thyroglossal duct. Appears between the anterior two-third. This is the anterior two-third. Posterior one third descends in the neck behind the hyoid retrohyoid position. Then it will reach the definitive position around this de developing larynx and trachea, which develop from laryngotracheal diverticulum coming from the prepharyngeal part of the foregut. So essentially, the thyroid gland is derived from endoderm of pharyngeal apparatus. Remember that. So it is having close relation with the development of the tongue. So sometimes the anomalies will involve the tongue also. So it will grow downwards across the tongue, and then in the neck it becomes retrohyoid and finally descends and forms the the two lobes. The proliferation of the cells form the two lobes of thyroid gland, which are connected by the isthmus. So isthmus develops in front of the developing larynx, that is larynx and trachea. We will see that, and the parafollicular C cells, they are derived from the neural crest cells of the caudal pharyngeal complex, which is derived from third and fourth arch. 
So soon this thyrovasal duct, which is connecting between the foramen cecum, that is the upper end, where the thyroid diverticulum develops first, it gets obliterated and disappears. You can see in this video, you can see the floor of the primitive pharynx there, and these are all our pharyngeal pouches, pharyngeal clefts. So here you can see, here there is thyroid diverticulum formation of thyroid diverticulum here. And uh, as you notice, this thyroid diverticulum will dis descend between the anterior two third and posterior one third uh, of the tongue, and it will reach the definitive position here. You can see in the left lateral view, hyoid bone, thyroid diverticulum. This is laryngotracheal diverticulum. See how this thyroid duct is descending in the neck retrohyoid position, and it surrounds the developing laryngotracheal diverticulum. That's why thyroid flanks the thyroid and cricoid cartilage it flanks the larynx it flanks the larynx there so that is how it develops and along with the development of thyroid gland there will be development of thymus and superior and inferior parathyroids superior parathyroid is derived from the fourth arch inferior from the fourth arch third arch like this you can see the parafollicular c cells some say it is that they are derived from ultima bronchial bodies, which are derived from the fifth arch, which disappear. So proximal opening of the thyroid duct will form the foramen cecum in the dorsum of the tongue. So this will be the foramen cecum here. And in some people, around 50% of people, pyramidal lobe will be there attached to the hyoid bone above by a fibromuscular gland called as levator gland with thyroidic. And remember that thyroid gland is the first endocrine gland to develop and starts functioning by the end of third month. So coming to the anomalies, as we discussed, foramen cecum between the anterior two-third of the tongue and posterior one-third. And if it doesn't descend, become lingual thyroid just below the mucus of the tongue, you will see the thyroid. Or it may be arrested in any part in the path of the descent. So there may be sublingual thyroid, or sometimes it may descend up to thorax, leading to intrathoracic thyroid, or sometimes it may be displaced from the common path, causing ectopic thyroid tissue. You can notice here. This is the scan lingual thyroid here on the right side. You can see there lingual thyroid. And sometimes you'll have some anomalous lobes and shapes. We had discussed about the middle lobe. It often lies on the left side attached to isthmus, and it may be large enough to reach hyoid bone or connected by the levator glandular thyroid. Sometimes isthmus may be absent because two lobes may not connect to each other. And thyroid cyst and fistula. As we discussed after the formation, thyroid duct should obliterate and disappear. But sometimes it may disappear in the proximal and distal part, middle part may from the thyroid cyst. Cyst is nothing but the cavity filled with fluid lined by epithelium. Or entire thyroid duct may, may be patent to form the fistula, the epithelialized connection. And usually to remove this thyroid fistula, we perform cyst trunk operation. So you can see there. So it can be arrested. And sometimes these uh, bilobed mass may, may split into multiple small nodules leading to accessory thyroid tissue. Coming to the histology of thyroid. So as you already know, this thyroid gland is, is endocrine gland. So and it is of follicular variety. One more endocrine part which is a follicular variety is pars intermedia which secrete melatonin, which is a part of a pituitary gland. And the this follicular variety you can see here, the colloid follicles lined by the simple cuboidal epithelium containing the colloid. And between the follicles, you will have parafollicular C cells. You can notice there, parenchyma has these, and it is highly vascular. So in the diagram, we should show more capillaries as we discussed, the peculiarity is highly vascular endocrine gland. 
and endocrine gland usually will be vascular because they have to secrete their secretions into the blood itself isn't it so they'll have more of these capillaries and the sinusoids so make that point that is a this is the very application practical application when you are drawing the, the, the endocrine gland whether it's pituitary thyroid or suprarenal gland draw more capillaries because they are vascular because they have to empty the secretion into the blood stream only so you can see there this is how you should sh you should draw the colloid follicles you can also show the capsules and divisions of this lobe into lobules and coming to the clinical notes so we have seen all this anatomy the relations the blood supply and all why it is so much important because as we discussed the superior thyroid artery is closely associated with the external laryngeal nerve okay so you should ligate the thyroid artery as close as possible to the upper pole or apex of the gland to avoid injury to external laryngeal nerve as it supplies cricothyroid muscle muscle of the larynx leading to hoarseness and inferior artery is closely related to or i we discussed it we have a, a variant relation is it is associated with the recurrent laryngeal nerve and this nerve can be found in the triangle formed by the common carotid artery and trachea and the thyroid lobe in the triangle you can see there this triangle you can find out the or you can approach the recurrent laryngeal nerve it has a variant course that's why you should tie the this inferior thyroid artery as much possible away from the gland because it doesn't have a definite course or it has a loopy variant course not like a constant relation between the superior thyroid artery and external laryngeal nerve that you should keep in mind and you can see there that relation is highly variable okay so consider this anatomical perspective during the thyroidectomy and also the coverings and the capsules and the venous plexus beneath the true capsule these are all the things which we you should keep in mind while performing thyroidectomy and i think surgeons will tell you better and to how to approach and all okay that is surgical anatomy uh, santosh sir i would like to yes. intervene sorry Yeah. Ah, yes, yes, uh, when you mentioned about surgeons, I just uh, wanted to yeah, yeah, yeah. tell please, we please, have please, a recent please. advance in this uh, aspect. That, okay. Uh, okay, sir. Nowadays, uh, we prefer to ligate it as close as to the gland, sir. Both the superior thyroid and okay, inferior okay. thyroid. We okay, prefer sir, to okay, tie sir. as close as to the gland, especially inferior thyroid. Okay, we ligate the capsular yes, branches. That is inside the Caps uh, okay, okay. capsules. Uh, individual branches we ligate uh, for the reason being. Inferior thyroid or only supplies the parathyroids also. So if we ligate it okay, far okay. away, the the mm -hmm. blood supply to the parathyroids may get jeopardized. So to avoid that, okay, sir, okay, sir. we are not ligating okay, the main uh, trunk or the main branch of the inferior thyroid. In fact, uh, instead only the capsular branches are ligated, sir. Like uh, okay, sir, okay, okay, sir. Uh, sir both sir, superior as well and as well as superior also to uh, superior thyroid artery. like it as close as to the gland to prevent injury mm. to the external laryngeal nerve whereas okay. uh, inferior thyroid artery we like it as close as to the gland to prevent uh, uh, ischemia of the parathyroid sir okay sir okay thank you sir and and what in case of uh, total thyroidectomy sir yeah yeah total thyroidectomy also total thyroidectomy okay, also okay. we do follow the same sir same sir but in total thyroidectomy we will take out the parathyroid glands and uh, and graft some no no, no. We, we try to preserve the parathyroid sir Okay, 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 okay. We sir, try okay, to okay. preserve the parathyroids uh, because they are required, no sir, for calcium metabolism. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, we yes, yes, yes. we try to mm -hmm. preserve the parathyroids and uh, mm -hmm. recurrent laryngeal nerve and this inferior thyroid artery branch uh, in the total thyroidectomy as well, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Because the you see, this is the this is the outcome of the discussion. So when you discuss with surgeons and other learned people, will come to know about the new advances. otherwise we usually tell them to remember her do you know her anyone we used to remember this as a ria sen the recurrent laryngeal nerve is related to inferior thyroid artery away from the gland what usually we learnt in anatomy but as sir told nowadays it is not required so you don't need to remember her <laughs> so sen superior thyroid artery is related to external laryngeal nerve near the gland so with this uh, update by sir this is not relevant so coming to the the question here 
so we have discussed everything here in integrated fashion we discussed the location shape coverings uh, presenting parts relations blood supply histology and development but coming back to the question what was our question discuss the thyroid glanders coverings location presenting parts and uh, relations then blood supply then add a note on development so here i am going to tell you what we look for in the exam paper as a evaluator myself okay we have minimum 4 minutes to evaluate okay maximum we can evaluate for any time but why people will do more than 4 minutes because they have certain number of monetary benefit for each paper so nobody will is going to read what you written everything so keep your answer specific to the point because the question paper is structured if they ask the coverings write only coverings true capsule and false capsule and explain that if they ask presenting parts write that don't read everything what you know like peculiarities whatever we discussed why why we discussed to get a wholesome experience of anatomy of thyroid gland but that is not required in the answer paper you have to write structured nowadays passing is very easy okay you have to focus on the presentation whatever you read is fine but how you present is important okay sometimes you may have noticed your roommates or your friends who read compared to less than less than you or take less time than you they score better because it, the the essence lies in the presentation and drawings diagrams a picture speaks thousand words okay so while evaluating if i see a paper with a diagram proper diagram showing all these two lobes isthmus and with the proper labeling and all i i need not see what you written in the theory part you should write theory part that to point wise don't write like paragraph okay in the paragraph beating around the bush no okay nobody will read like newspaper okay we will see we will see the thyroid gland we see diagram we see appropriate uh, coloring okay nowadays in the any university the scanning is very of high quality high resolution you can use all the relevant colors color pencils you can use so that will create a better impression and your answer will be clear to the examiner what you wanted to know and we search for the keywords there what written or not are you following so coming to the our question here first question was covering so what we will do in coverings so i'll just tell you the diagram here you should draw yes thyroid cartilage there this is thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage as then trachea with tracheal rings that is the hyoid bone and let us draw the thyroid gland here with uh, the two lobes isthmus and you can show pyramidal lobe yes and you can see this is thyroid gland coming to the coverings what are two coverings false capsule and true capsule false capsule is nothing but a part of pretracheal fascia attached about to the hyoid bone below to the mediastinum that is true capsule derived from the gland itself and beneath true capsule you can see the veins they show some blue dots veins so this will give the hold some picture to the examiner so this student or this guy or girl knows everything here you have told about location also they are flanking thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage in the middle of the neck okay here you are telling about true capsule false capsule and also about the venous plexus lying beneath the true capsule and you should during thyroidectomy you should remove with the th this true capsule okay so you are giving that uh, that uh, that presentation to the evaluator then coming to the presenting parts what are the presenting parts simply draw the diagram here so we have written the diagram yes it has two lobes which are roughly pyramidal isthmus is there and each lobe you can see two lobes and the isthmus isthmus is roughly quadrilateral each lobe has what apex base that is the anterior border posterior border and three surfaces what are three surfaces this is the anterior lateral surface or superficial surface medial surface and posterior surface this is the presenting parts of the lobe and the gland that is how you should write and label and in the right lateral view because you are showing the relation of the apex here in lateral view third cartilage cricoid cartilage trachea with the tracheal rings c shaped cartilage rings and here you can see the inferior constrictor muscle has two parts thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus and this is the lateral view of the cartilage and uh, this muscle attachment that is cricothyroid 
this is cricothyroid muscle what you're seeing this is the gland pyramidal lobe or lateral lobe sorry lateral lobe it is like a three sided pyramid you can see the apex base here you can see in constrictor thyroid cricoid cricothyroid muscle okay so this is the apex is wedged between inferior constrictor and one more muscle what is that sterno thyroid attached to the oblique line of thyroid cartilage sterno thyroid muscle which is a deep and diverging muscle forming the floor of the muscular triangle so you are showing the relation of apex and base here you are showing the relations then coming to the relations in this uh, horizontal section of the neck this is thyroid gland again you can show the capsule covering here also behind the thyroid gland is flanking this trachea and esophagus you can see there we are taking section at the isthmus level you can see that is false capsule pre trachea fascia ligament and you can see there the muscles sterno thyroid and suprabellar fomohyoid behind that is sterno hyoid suprabellar converging that is sterno cleido mastoid and here you can show the investing layer here which surrounds the neck it surrounds two triangles two muscles and two glands then cavitated sheath related to the posterior surface here cavitated sheath contains what common cavitated artery internal jugular vein and vagus nerve and you can see the recurrent laryngeal nerve is here this is the vagus nerve so in the tracheoesophageal groove so like this if you show the lateral relations you can explain you can depict the posterior relations you can depict okay medial relations also you can depict medial relations to cartilage to muscle to nerves and uh, two muscles and all like that you can two tubes trachea and esophagus like that you can depict so in a long question we expect at least two to three diagrams whatever the uh, subdivision subheadings we have asked that relevant diagram okay with the proper labeling i could not label here because of the lack of space but you should label properly and don't use short forms while labeling okay so like this you should draw and for blood supply one simple diagram as we have discussed in a detailed manner okay you can see and that is there okay thyroid gland these are the common cavitator artery that external cavitator artery gives superior thyroid artery dividing into anterior and posterior branch and the subclavian from there what you have thyro cervical trunk that will give one branch inferior thyroid three branches are there superior intercostal trans cervical and inferior thyroid artery you can see how it supplies and uh, external laryngeal nerve is closely related to the super third artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve is having a variant course with the inferior third artery then the internal vein thyroid gland is drained by three veins superior thyroid and middle thyroid goes to respective interjugular veins whereas inferior thyroid goes to the left brachiocephalic this diagram is enough to tell about the blood supply blood supply means both arterial supply and venous drainage okay so these diagrams we expect in the exam in the paper okay please draw diagrams practice diagrams okay you will learn anatomy with the diagrams okay whatever and with dissections and dissection is very important where you will get the 3d aspect here i can show you animations there are many number of channels showing animations but still dissection is ultimate dissection cadaver is your best teacher okay that will give you a lot of information please do dissection spend more time in dissection okay this one cadaver is worth 10 books so whatever you want to learn learn from cadaver you will remember better and ultimately whatever you learn from the textbooks and animations you have to apply on the patients only are you following there you should have the feel of artery feel of the nerve here we are showing with the colors but when you open okay i think patients are can tell you in a better way and to, uh, it is very difficult to stop bleedings all those bleeders you have to ligate or cauterize them okay so that's why I focus more on dissection okay and try to learn and remember and teach by diagrams and represent your answer more in diagrams so this is my view so if uh, anyone has any other opinion or sir want to tell in something or share his experience welcome thank you thank you for the opportunity